Mornings at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, President Biden and other federal health officials are taking aim at Texas and other states for relaxing coronavirus restrictions. Outside with live cam, it's chilly out there, but not quite as cold as the last couple of mornings. When's our next cold front going to be here? And what about our next chance at a shower or thunderstorm. Good morning to you. It is Thursday, the 4th of March. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, cool start to the day, but I enjoyed yesterday afternoon. Oh, it was beautiful and can you believe it? We're creeping up and on another time change. Good day. I we just wanted time. to get it out of the way. Anyway, yeah, it's a week from Sunday, but uh, let's talk about the beautiful weather today. It is cool out, not as cold as yesterday, but still you want to grab a jacket. The other thing we've got to watch out for some fog. Now, just in the past couple of minutes, fog has started to show up around Victoria. We've got temperatures that uh, are still well, a little bit below normal, 47 degrees. Normal low is 48, uh, 43 at Randolph. And then you look at these dew point temperatures and the measure of moisture in the atmosphere. So they're starting to run neck and neck. We've got mostly clear sky right now and as temperatures drop down and get closer to these numbers, no wind really to speak of out there. We're going to start to see a little more fog uh, trying to develop later on this morning. Mold, Mountain Cedar and Elm are all on the uh, low side and throughout the day, a couple of patches of fog are going to be developing. Uh, temperatures will stay right around mid 40s here in town and uh, not much of a breeze to speak of. Otherwise, cloudy skies, then plenty of sunshine later on today. Yes, even warmer than yesterday, getting up into the mid 70s. So above normal yesterday, we hit 71 officially and then it's going to be even warmer than that tomorrow, despite the fact a front's going to be moving on through here. What's that mean for the weekend? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King. Okay, let's not talk about the time change. What about traffic? No, we'll, we'll skip the ch time change talk for now. Mike. Thank you. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is uh, 35 at uh, Say Highway 46 in New Braunfels. I have some construction in that area this morning, particularly on 46. They're doing some uh, Paving work there on 46, so watch out for that until uh, about 6 o'clock uh, this morning. And here's a look at that area on the uh, map there. You can see a couple of cones there on 35 as well, uh, so watch out for that this morning. All back into town here, though. Things are looking uh, mostly fine. There is uh, other construction projects here or there. Uh, this is a F I 10 westbound at F F 1516, so that'll slow you down a little bit. So if you're coming in from Seguin at this hour into downtown San Antonio, that's 33 minutes. Usually that's 29 or 28 minutes, 26 minutes on 35 from New Braunfels. And we'll have another update coming up. We turned out of the coronavirus here in the U.S. President Joe Biden blasting Texas and Mississippi for lifting mass mandates and all restrictions on businesses. ABC's Marcus Moore has the latest. President Biden reacting to news that Texas and Mississippi are lifting all restrictions and mask mandates. I think it's a big mistake. The last thing we need is the Neanderthal thinking that in the meantime, everything's fine. Take off your mask. Forget it. His public health officials also doubling down, pointing to another uptick in cases and deaths, with variants threatening to, quote, hijack our success. I think that was ill-advised. It is really quite risky. Stamina has worn thin. Fatigue is winning. Every individual has uh, is empowered to do the right thing here, regardless of um, what the, the states decide. At least 11 states recently moving to relax restrictions. Now in Texas and across the country. We now have vaccines, vaccines to protect Texans from COVID. But in reality, Texas ranks 48th in administering vaccines per capita. The average daily deaths here have nearly doubled and daily cases have increased by 75% over the last 10 days. New infections now more than they were when the statewide mask mandate went into effect last July. Since the vaccine is not really readily available, I just don't really feel comfortable putting all my staff at risk. And while some celebrate. If you want to wear a mask, you're more than welcome to. Are we going to require any of it? Absolutely not. Others are wary. I know everybody's anxious. I'm anxious, but I think a few more weeks, month, maybe whatever number may be, shouldn't hurt anybody. Chef Ty Frazier tells me he will keep following CDC guidelines. What happens when the surge goes up and then we, we have to shut down again? Containing the virus crucial as the race to vaccinate picks up speed. Nine FEMA locations opening around the country today, from Pennsylvania to Florida. And at this one in New York, long lines before doors even opened. The first day they said you got to apply, I did and I got right on. 
and this is what it looked like inside the Javits Center. It can now open around the clock. That site able to vaccinate 8,000 people a day. I got it, I got it. Marcus Moore, ABC News, Dallas. Here at home, overall, our seven-day average of coronavirus cases continues to decrease in Bear County. Six more deaths were confirmed in the latest report. Governor Greg Abbott says a downward trend also is happening across the state. So that's part of the reason he decided to end the mask mandate next week. So far, we continue to see a downward trend of COVID-19 patients in our local hospitals. There's been a decline of 63 patients since Monday. Right now, latest numbers show about 400 COVID patients in area hospitals, 148 in ICU, 86 are on ventilators. And when it comes to area max vaccination sites, appointments have filled up quickly at the WellMed sites. Recipients will also need to wait for available spots to open up at the Alamo Dome. You can get text alerts for vaccine availability by texting the word vaccine to 55,000. Right now, it's 435. You're watching GMSA. And still ahead, the U.S. Capitol on high alert again today. We're going to have the latest on another possible plot to storm the building. Plus, a new report on why Border Patrol officials are holding unaccompanied minors longer than the law allows. And taking a look outside with a live cam, it is 48 degrees right now. Yeah, actually, I guess about 47 degrees. Still a cold start to your day. We're going to check in with Mike later in the newscast. And welcome back. It's 439. This morning, lawmakers in Washington are on high alert, bracing for potential violence nearly two months after the riots at the Capitol. House leaders canceled today's legislative session and rescheduled votes. That's after federal investigators warned of a possible plot by extremist militia groups to again storm the Capitol. The announcement comes as the Capitol Police and other law enforcement agencies are taking heat from Congress in hearings this week on their handling of the January 6th riot. U.S. House has passed H.R. 1, a sweeping government ethics and election bill. Democrats describe it as an anti-corruption legislation that would expand voting access and improve accountability and transparency in Washington. Republicans, however, argue the legislation represents a federal power grab that Democrats are advancing in an effort to gain advantage in the elections. The largely party line vote was 220 to 210. H.R. 1 passed the House during the last Congress after Dem Democrats won back the majority but failed to advance in the Republican-controlled Senate. Legislation is still likely to hit a roadblock in the current Senate. Unaccompanied minors detained on the Mexican border are often held in custody longer than the law allows. That's according to internal Border Patrol documents. They show the average custody time for unaccompanied minor is se se minors excuse me, is 77 hours, five hours longer than the legal limit. The reason is border officials are facing a flood of migrants and unaccompanied minors coming from Mexico. But because of COVID, they can use only a little more than half of the beds designated for the kids, which means unaccompanied minors have to stay in facilities not intended for children and they're held longer. The Department of Homeland Security is exploring steps to speed up the placement of unaccompanied minors. The government is also building a second temporary structure in Texas to house migrants. It is game day. The San Antonio Spurs host the Oklahoma City Thunder tonight. Spurs coming off of that win earlier this week against the Knicks. Spurs lost to the Thunder back on February 24th. Tip off tonight set for 8 o'clock at the AT&T Center. Then it's off to Atlanta for the NBA All-Star Weekend. Coach Pop says he expects several players who were out due to the league's COVID mandates to return after this weekend. But uh, a reminder, no Spurs participating in the All-Star team, uh, All-Star game this weekend, rather. Although there should be, but just saying. A couple of them. Just Maybe saying. next year. 441, 47 degrees. And coming up next for the first time since stepping aside from the Bachelor franchise, host Chris Harrison is speaking out about some recent controversies. And welcome back. It's 444. In an ABC News exclusive interview, Bachelor host Chris Harrison addresses the controversy over his comments regarding a contestant's past racial behavior. ABC's Mona Kassar-Abdi has the details in today's GMA First Look. 
And, and you in this morning's GMA show. First Look, an so ABC News exclusive. Why would you defend Rachel Kirkinell? For the first time since stepping aside from the Bachelor franchise, host Chris Harrison is speaking out to Good Morning America's Michael Strahan. It's been just over three weeks since Harrison made these comments to former Bachelorette Rachel Lindsay, defending current contestant Rachel Kirkinell and that picture of her at an Old South themed party in 2018. It's not a good look. No, it's not a good. Well, Rachel, is it a good look in 2018 or is it not a good look in 2021? You said, quote, is it not a good look in 2018 or is it not a good look in 2021? Because they're the big difference to you. What is the difference? This morning, Chris Harrison is opening up about his regrets, what he's learned and the future of the Bachelor franchise. It's all coming up at 7 a.m. with your GMA First Look. I'm Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. 445. Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King. I know yesterday we had a lot of construction. What about today? Uh, we do have some construction here and there, Stephanie. Uh, this is at uh, I-10 East at uh, Loop 410. You can see uh, the flashing uh, lights there work uh, ongoing. So let's take a look a little farther east of there, heading towards 1604. We still have uh, this uh, slowdown here, traffic down to 32 miles per hour at FM 1516. So look out for that. But across uh, most of the area at this hour, things looking okay. Uh, not too much uh, red. So we, like to, we like to see that there is no red. Sorry for the double negative, but you get the idea. Looking at 281 on the south side, uh, we had a slight delay here just south of 410, but that seems to have cleared up. So eight minutes heading southbound from uh, 410 to 1604 and uh, 1604 to 410. Eight minutes this morning, guys. Thank you, Samuel. Too, uh, too early to start talking double negative. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> well, it's, it's too early. The mouth's not working. <laughs> it's hard to it, it, it happens, <laughs> trust us. All right, ink plot test time. Mike, what do you see in the cloud formation above your head there up high in the sky? Uh, I was thinking like a bird. Yeah, like a like, swan or a bird or... Yeah. Stingray. Mm -hmm. stingray. Yeah, like a stingray. <laughs> Sam, what do you get? I was going with a bird. You kind of stole mine, Mike. Ah. Uh. Kind of like that. Yeah, beautiful picture from a couple of evenings ago. Sunset tonight should be beautiful as was yesterday. Sunrise, a couple of extra clouds are hanging around here. We're going to have to watch out for some fog. Obviously, nothing is showing up in this picture as of right now. Nice and clear. And dew point temperatures, uh, the only place, by the way, reporting any fog right now is a little bit in Victoria, but just down to four miles visibility. But again, as the morning rolls on, you have to watch out for some of that. Uh, dew points, remember yesterday, they had dropped down considerably from the previous day. Now, things have gone the other direction. Dew point is 20 degrees higher in Kerrville than what it was yesterday. About uh, 10 Hondo Uvalde here in town on average uh, 10 degrees higher and these numbers are going to continue to go up. So we've got enough humidity out there. Not that you really notice it, but enough to help us out with uh, some of that fog this morning. And then these numbers will continue to go up throughout the uh, evening hours and then also overnight into tomorrow morning. So that will also help out with a little bit of fog around the area tomorrow morning. But then here comes that drier air. This is going to be moving through. The front is actually going to be coming through. Uh, looks like about mid late morning hours. We will start to see the wind shift around. The air dries out, but it's not well, you, you got to call it a cold front, but it's not as though the cold air comes in right behind that. We get that dry air first in windy conditions. The dry air then heats up very quickly, and so that's going to really drop the humidity down, and it's also going to increase the fire danger, especially out in portions of the hill country with this very dry air and these windy conditions and warm temperatures. Tomorrow's going to be peaking in the upper 70s here in town, probably some low 80s along the Rio Grande Valley. Then the cooler is going to sort of settle in in behind that. Now, this computer model had a lot of sunshine around here today. More clouds tonight. It's also trying to squeeze out a little sprinkle or two. I don't even have mention of it in the forecast. It's going to be tomorrow morning as that front moves through. There's a chance of it, but very, very doubtful. Then we clear out in behind that. So it's going to be a good looking day, but again, it's going to be very breezy tomorrow on that higher fire danger. Then the clouds come back in here. Then the cooler air is going to start to settle in as we go into uh, Saturday as well as Sunday. Cooler is a relative term. We'll just be down in the mid 60s for high temperatures where we are going to be today for a noon temperature, partly cloudy skies. So we'll have clouds this morning as well as some of that fog and then a high temperature up to 74. Beautiful day, plenty of sunshine, few clouds hanging around here. And then the front moves through early tomorrow. So we'll start off with again, chance for some fog. 
Then we clear on out. Windy conditions, high fire danger off to the west. 77 high temperature here in town, down to 50 Saturday morning, 65 over the weekend. Going to keep a lot of clouds around. Looks like the weekend through the middle of next week. Maybe a couple of little sprinkly showers middle of next week and temperatures back into the uh, mid to upper 70s. All right. Thank you very much, Mike. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks to last month's winter storm, the overall estimated losses so far to the state's agriculture industry is just over $600 million. That's according to the Texas A&M Ag Life Extension Service that surveyed the damage. Jesse Degollado has more details on how the beef and poultry industries have been affected and the prices you'll be paying. The state's livestock and poultry industries saw an estimated $228 million in losses, according to the Texas A&M Ag Life Extension Service. Not only did Texas poultry producers struggle to keep their chickens warm. That probably ate up a lot more costs than they were expecting uh, in producing the birds this year. To create energy to keep warm, the cattle had to eat. More hay was, was put out, more feed put out, and more cost because of that. But water for their cattle? cattle was just as crucial. You know, those cows drink between 10 to 20 gallons of water per head per day. That meant braving single digit temperatures so they could use the water tanks at Brian Batiste's place out in southeast Bear County. You know, you still had to go out there and break ice and make sure those cows had access to plenty of water. The hardships on both producers and the animals they raise will be costly. And yet the Texas A&M Ag Life Economist says prices really won't be affected since Texas also relies on out of state suppliers. Oftentimes storms like this cause some short term market uh, turmoil, but really don't result in higher prices for consumers at the grocery store. Jesse DeGollado, KSAT 12 News. And time now is 451 and 48 degrees for now. Up next, one of the longest running TV shows is getting renewed again. And let's take a look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, one, two, zero, fireball nine. Your daily four, five, six, 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 fireball four. Cash five numbers, six, 14, 20, 22, 34, and lotto Texas, six, 26, 30, 32, 35, 47. And powerball 21, 40, 44, 50, 55, powerball 16, power play three. Good luck from everybody at GMSA. New details on the new Coming to America movie, plus The Simpsons renewed yet for an, uh, renewed for yet another two seasons. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. We are going back to America. Just it's one so more day until you. Eddie Murphy returns to rule us all in Coming to America, the highly anticipated sequel to the 1988 classic comedy. And Murphy's co-star Namzama Mbatha says she was feeling the pressure from everyone. I was at the U.S. Embassy in South Africa getting my visa so I could come and get my job. So she's like, oh, Paramount, oh, okay. Uh, which movie is this? I was like, Coming to America. And she looked up and she's like, don't mess it up. Coming to America starts streaming Friday on Amazon Prime Video. The Simpsons will outlive us all. The Fox sitcom renewed for seasons 33 and 34 through 2023, extending its streak as the longest running primetime scripted series in TV history. The Emmy winning animated series premiered in December 1989 and will hit 700 episodes later this month. The Screen Actors Guild Awards switching things up because of the pandemic. No two hour live show this year. The producers telling Variety it'll be one hour and taped. That means nominees will find out if they won a few days before the show airs and will have to keep it a secret. The SAG Awards air April 4th on TNT and TBS. And happy birthday today to two of the funniest women on television. S Creek Emmy winner Catherine O'Hara is 67. While Everybody Loves Raymond Emmy winner Patricia Heaton is 63. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now is 4.56, and it's actually 47 degrees, not 48 degrees right now. More tension at the U.S. Capitol thanks to a possible plot by extremist militia groups. We will have the details. Plus, Nintendo is getting ready to announce a new version of this popular Switch video game console. Details ahead in Tech Bytes. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A new threat against the Capitol yields heightened security concerns. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, the baseless claims that has some lawmakers on edge.
And outside with live care, Mike wants us to be on the lookout for the possibility of some fog in the hours leading up to sunrise this morning. Will we string together a few more beautiful weather days? We'll talk to him in just a moment. Good morning. It is March 4th. It is Thursday. Thank you for joining us today. Let's go straight to Mike and get some answers on how our day is shaping up. No, it's still early out there, Mike, but uh, how much of a problem is fog going to be this morning? Well, not too bad, uh, especially off to the east. Obviously, we've seen a, a hint of it and um, we've got some clear skies. Temperatures aren't quite as cool as what they were at this time yesterday. Of course, yesterday we dropped down to 38 degrees. We're at 47 right now. Normal uh, low temperature is 48, so right there. But notice how we don't have really any wind to speak of. And when I walked down to the house come, coming into work, there was mostly clear skies. So we've got some of the ingredients in place to see some of that fog trying to develop. Then a huge warm up today. Yesterday made it up to 71. Today we're going to be right up there about 74 degrees and it's going to be very nice. But the humidity will continue to kind of creep up as the uh, the day rolls on. As far as the aquifer, it did go up two tenths of a foot in the past or on yesterday's reading, I should say. And then also the allergens, everything is on the low side. Mountain cedar still hanging in there. Visibility around the area right now, uh, like I said, down to the southeast around Victoria. There is a little bit, but that's it and maybe more well, well down to the south in the uh, down there in the valley, but uh, otherwise not bad visibilities. The morning is still young, though, so we got to watch it as we approach sunrise right around seven o'clock. So mostly cloudy skies again, some patchy fog around this morning and then later on today, mostly sunny, warmer than yesterday, up to 74 degrees. Now we'll have some fog again tomorrow morning, then a front moves on through. Despite that, it's still going to be even warmer. Also, it's going to be very breezy. The air is going to dry out and that's going to increase the fire danger, especially out in the hill country tomorrow afternoon. Then the cooler air kind of settles in here and that being sort of a relative term will be in the mid 60s as opposed to mid and upper 70s, a little bit below normal, but uh, not a bad looking weekend. Not the prettiest of weekends. Plenty of clouds around here. More details on that coming up. Traffic Authority, Samuel King. What's going on, sir? I see some flashing lights. Yes, flashing lights, some construction related activity here on I 10 East, uh, just, to, just to the west of 1604. So between 410 and 1604, you can see uh, some of the traffic uh, being diverted there. We expect uh, that to be picked up for uh, the day here shortly, but we'll keep an eye on it, of course. And this is a look at that area uh, on the map. You can see a bit of a slowdown there at 1516, just uh, past it. This is 1604 here uh, on this side of the screen. So uh, Watch out for that if you are someone who needs to travel uh, westbound on I-10 this morning between 1604 and uh, 410. Looking at the rest of the area, nothing uh, too much on the map. We do have another uh, construction uh, related slowdown here. This is on 35. Uh, they just uh, took off the, the marker here, but you can still see a bit of a slowdown there at FM 1103. So uh, watch out for that this morning too. But uh, that marker's taken off, so maybe that will clear up here shortly. Uh, take a look at the travel times across the region. Again, heading westbound into San Antonio on I-10. Now take you 33 minutes uh, from Seguin. That's a little more than normal. That's usually about 29 or 30 minutes. Uh, 26 minutes coming in southbound on 35 from New Braunfels. 25 minutes on I-10 from Bernie. And we'll have another check of traffic coming up in a little bit, guys. Thank you, Sam. You'll see in a bit. Federal officials say domestic terrorists could be planning another attack on the Capitol today. That is forcing a level of heightened security around Washington, D.C. And it's also causing House leaders to cancel today's legislative session. ABC's Ike Ajachi is in Washington with more on the security efforts. This morning, the nation's capital remains on high alert. The FBI and Capitol Police warning of new threats against the government. Investigators uncovering a possible plot by militias to again target the Capitol today. ABC News obtaining an internal bulletin from Capitol Police stating an unidentified group of militia violent extremists had discussed plans to take control of the U.S. Capitol and remove Democratic lawmakers. People are deeply concerned about what uh, potential threats could be out there. The threat is linked to a far-right conspiracy theory pushed by QAnon, falsely claiming Trump will return to Washington today. The claims are false. The security measures are real. Barbed wire and fencing surrounding the Capitol. National Guard members with heavy military vehicles on duty. Roads closed. We have enhanced our security posture. We've taken immediate steps to let uh, the National Guard as well as our workforce know 
what to expect. It's a stark difference from what was seen on January 6th. Lawmakers this week holding hearings. You have uh, insurrectionists going through the police lines. You are on the phone and they're not immediately approving your request. Drilling down on why it took the Pentagon over three hours to approve the D.C. National Guard to move in and back up Capitol Police on the day of the attack. The Army senior leaders did not think that it looked good. It would be a good optic. Members of Congress pointing to the summer when the killing of unarmed black men led to protests. And the National Guard stood ready. Was the issue of optics ever brought up by Army leadership when the D.C. National Guard was deployed during the summer of 2020? It was never discussed. The Senate will stay in session to continue work on President Biden's COVID relief bill despite the security concerns. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Just weeks after much of our state lost power, ERCOT's lead manager for the state's power grid is on his way out. The ERCOT board of directors says ERCOT president and CEO Bill Magnus will be given 60 days before he is fired. It follows the blast of freezing temperatures across the state, though many of our communities enduring without power. The two month period will allow Magnus to work with state leaders on potential reforms to ERCOT. The search for a new president and CEO is now expected to begin. This is the second senior official to leave their post. Public Utilities Commission Chair Deanne Walker resigned on Monday. Two people here in San Antonio who nearly died from COVID are urging the community to continue to follow safety protocols, even without the state mandate. Eladio Rendon and Carlos Munoz both say they nearly died from COVID complications last summer. They say they lost family members to the virus, too. They also say they were surprised that the governor would open Texas when less than 7% of the population has been vaccinated. With that type of percentage, it's just, it's just way too low for us just to you know, turn away from everything. Um, you know, 100% opening, um, no masks. It's just... It, it doesn't make sense to me. The virus is going to go up and there's going to be more people in the hospital, more uh, deaths, believe me, uh, and it's going to be scary. Scientists at Texas Biomed say there is a lot of proven evidence that shows social distancing and masks help reduce the spread of COVID. They say this is a critical time for Texas to get a handle on the pandemic. Heads up, San Antonio International Airport reminding travelers the facility will keep their mask requirements in place. The announcement was shared on the airport's Facebook page. It says the mandate falls under federal requirements at airports and on aircraft. VIA is also on Facebook reminding passengers they'll be required to wear face coverings on vehicles and at facilities. VIA is also citing federal requirements for the mandate. The only passengers who are exempt are those under the age of two. There's a new addition to the vaccine rollout plan. Teachers in Texas, along with school and child care staff, are now eligible to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. The Texas Department of State Health Services, which made the announcement, says the news does not come without its challenges. The challenge will continue to be uh, matching the supply with the demand. So we need to have more vaccines to our community to meet the new demand now that is going to be inclusive of all teachers and school staff. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf says vaccine appointments at the Wonderland of the Americas Mall have been booked weeks in advance. He says University Health might start to focus their vaccine efforts on T-shirts on March 22nd, but that plan is still being worked out. And as soon as we know, we'll let you know. 508, about 47 degrees. And still ahead, why Google has decided it will no longer sell ads based on a person's individual browsing across multiple websites. And next, a closer look at the origins of ranching right here in the Lone Star State that may have begun earlier than you ever thought. And taking a look outside with live pan, it's actually 47 degrees, but not as cold as yesterday to start your day. And we are actually going to get warmer this afternoon. We're going to check in with Mike later. Ranching has been an important part of Texas, but what some may not know as it first began back in the late 1600s, the Spaniards and Mexicans developing the area at the time. Our Eric Hernandez provides some historic details in the latest Tejano Moments story. While New Spain was developing the area we now know as Texas, explorers start developing the land around missions into ranchos or ranches. When those first expeditions come, 
uh, along with the men, uh, the cavalry mounted men, come supplies, uh, horses, uh, and cattle uh, to the extent that those cattle are going to be the first uh, time that livestock and horses come into Texas. These ranches begin to emerge in the southern and eastern parts of the state. And we're talking about um, by 1721, uh, there's already the first mission ranches, especially around San Antonio with the missions we have here. And within those ranches, you could find what is now an icon of Texas, the Longhorn, which were being brought in from Spain. They come to Texas and they multiply incredibly. There's, uh, it's purported that close to a million head of livestock are here by the mid 1700s. Besides Longhorns, two other major contributions of those first ranches by Tejanos was the development of the science of ranching and the role of the vaquero or cowboys. The vaqueros produce ultimately what we know as the cowboy and ranching creates that environment, the society and the culture that we all honor today. All of this important as it shows the first initial roles the Hanos played in developing the ranching industry in Texas. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. And to learn more about Tejano history, you can see past Tejano moment stories on KSAT.com or on the KSAT streaming app. And time now is 513 and it is 47 degrees right now. Still ahead, a look at plans by Nintendo to unveil a new Switch gaming console. Plus, why more NFL football may soon be coming to Amazon Prime. In today's Tech Bytes, Google is planning to stop selling ads based on your specific browsing history. The company says it will abandon tracking technologies that identify users across multiple websites amid growing concern about privacy. The move could shake up the digital advertising industry. Gamers may soon be able to enjoy a new version of the Nintendo Switch. The latest model is expected to be equipped with a bigger screen, a 7-inch Samsung OLED display. Mass production of the console will reportedly start in June with hopes of meeting the holiday demand. In sports, NFL fans may be facing big changes when it comes to watching games. The league is reportedly close to reaching a deal that would make Amazon Prime Video the exclusive home of Thursday Night Football after the 2022 season. The Wall Street Journal reports all the new broadcasting deals could be done by next week. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Well, prices are going up at grocery stores this morning, and things could actually get worse. The government has a new prediction on where prices are headed. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details. This morning, experts warning of rising food prices with no end in sight to the spike. One major factor, the cost of gas on the rise after the deep freeze in Texas last month, which shut down the country's largest refineries raising the cost of shipping goods. It cost me more at the fuel pump, so it costs more to ship the load out, meaning it's gonna end up going in the store at a higher price. AAA says the national average for a gallon of gas is now 274. That's 31 cents higher than a month ago. But the pandemic still gets much of the blame for higher prices at grocery stores thanks to supply chain issues, shopper capacity limits in stores, and more people eating at home. The coronavirus has caused a major disruption within the food supply chain. We have this unprecedented demand uh, at the grocery stores. The government is now estimating a 6 to 9 percent increase this year in soybean prices, commonly found in many plant-based meat substitutes, and a 5 to 8 percent increase in wheat prices. Fast food customers also paying more. Prices are up more than 6 percent in the last year, compared to about 3 percent at traditional restaurants. And as food prices rise, so does the need for help. Thank you so much food banks are now seeing an unprecedented number of families coming through their doors. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Time check 518. Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King. I see a lot of flashing lights there at I-10 East and Loop 1604. Yeah, we have uh, some uh, construction related activity out here would appear some uh, lanes being uh, diverted. So you can see uh, the traffic being uh, diverted there onto the uh, frontage roads there on I-10. This is just a little west of 1604, so between 1604 and Loop 410. Take a look at that area uh, on uh, the map around uh, FM 1516 there uh, on the east side. And so you can see slow down there down to 27 uh, miles per hour. 
Uh, so uh, watch out for that if you are someone who needs to head in on I-10 westbound into San Antonio this morning uh, from Seguin and other areas. Uh, rest of the map looks uh, pretty good. We still have uh, this delay up here on 35 at 1103. Uh, there's some construction earlier, but you can still see uh, red on the map. We don't like to see red on the map, so that's something else to uh, consider going that way. The southbound lanes coming in from uh, New Braunfels look good. 26 minutes. It's adding a couple of minutes that construction northbound if you need to head up to uh, New Braunfels. And then Seguin still seeing a little uh, higher to normal in that travel time, 32 minutes this morning, guys. All right, well, watch out for that. Thank you, Samuel. Sorry I, for the sound effects there, Sam. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's all right. That's it adds to the ambiance. He's, so. he's going to pay you back in the middle of weather with an even bigger yawn. Maybe a snore. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Wow. You've got a before, before and after picture here, Mike? Yeah. No. <laughs> Another one of these uh, great pictures from Woodlawn Lake. And... I, Again, I mean, that looks like somewhere up in northern Michigan and Minnesota somewhere and the same view with all those blue skies out there. Yeah, fantastic uh, comparison. Thank you very much for the uh, case at connect picture. All right, it looks like we've you have a few clouds. This is looking off to the basically northwest. This is 10 at 410 off to the west northwest and some clouds around there and that will help a little bit if we have a kind of a cloud blanket on top of us as far as preventing a lot of uh, fog from developing because it's not going to allow any more heat to escape out into space. But we have had a lot of clear skies around the area this morning, which um, helps out with some of the fog to form up. Temperatures yesterday, 71 here in town, uh, basically mid and even some upper 70s down along the Rio Grande Valley, and then add to those numbers. So everybody about uh, three, four degrees warmer than yesterday. We will be on the above normal side. Normal high being 71, so we're looking at these mid and even a couple again upper 70s around the area, and then that trend will continue going into Friday as well. So throughout this morning, got some clouds hanging around here. We will have a little bit of fog, but it shouldn't last all that long. And then by the afternoon, we're going to have a lot more sunshine around here. And again, those temperatures very spring-like. Overnight, we'll see more clouds around here and a couple of computer models. You know, this one may try and scare up a stray sprinkle kind of doubt it but this is uh, going to be tomorrow morning we'll probably still be dealing with some fog tomorrow morning as well prior to that front moving through and as the front comes on through it's going to clear things out we'll get some drier air moving in here initially the wind is really going to pick up out of the uh, north to northwest and so that's what's going to shoot up the fire danger especially out in uh, portions of the hill country then we'll get the relatively cooler air coming on in here, uh, kind of lagging behind that in for the weekend. There's the upper level low. You can see this on the water vapor imagery right there around the uh, Utah Four Corners area. It's coming in our direction. It won't be close enough to really do anything directly, but that's what's going to help to warm us up. Then as it just scoots past, that's what's going to then bring the uh, front on through here to well, get us windy tomorrow, drier air, and then, like I said, eventually uh, some lower temperatures by the weekend. 67 today at noon, partly cloudy skies, a couple of leftover clouds, obviously, and we'll have to deal with some of the fog around here this morning. And then a high temperature today, 74, a little bit above normal. Add to that again tomorrow. We start off with uh, some fog and then uh, we'll start to clear on out there. And it's going to be windy tomorrow, breezy on Saturday as well. Temperatures will be... Oh gosh, 10 to 15 degrees lower over the weekend than what they will be tomorrow. Then it's back to the mid to upper 70s by the middle of next week. And rain chances, you know, other than a stray sprinkle tomorrow, a couple of showers perhaps by the middle of next week, but nothing real encouraging. Okay, but at least a nice weekend, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nice weekend. Thank you, Mike. 523, about 47 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, Michael B. Jordan leaps into action in his newest film, plus the latest, latest on Robert Zemeckis' live action take on Pinocchio. Loads of movie news today, from a sneak peek to casting news to the latest award nominations. CNN's David Daniel has it all in your Hollywood Minute. There's something inside of me that, that I can't turn off. A part of me that won't stop for anything. No remorse. Here's your first look at Without Remorse. Michael B. Jordan stars as U.S. Navy SEAL John Kelly, pursuing the assassins who killed his family as he tries to stop a war and uncover a conspiracy. 
The action thriller based on the Tom Clancy novels premieres on Amazon Prime April 30th. Cynthia Erivo is set to play the Blue Fairy in Robert Zemeckis' live-action take on Pinocchio. Also joining the cast, Joseph Gordon-Levitt as the voice of Jiminy Cricket. Tom Hanks is already on board as Geppetto. Production is set to begin this month. Life is full of possibilities. You just need to know where to look. Animation lovers are looking at Soul. The Disney Pixar pick scored a leading 10 nominations, including Best Feature for the Annie Awards, animation's biggest award show. Wolf Walkers also received 10 nominations, including Best Indie Feature. This year's Annie Awards will be presented in a virtual ceremony April 16th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 527 on your Thursday morning. And still ahead on GMSA, lawmakers continue to battle it out over the COVID-19 relief bill. We're going to look at some of the latest compromises involved in advancing the bill to a vote. And why more dollar store franchises could soon be opening in your neighborhood. Hi, good morning. <laughs> Sorry, it's March 4th on Thursday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Mike is standing by with a look at a morning that's not quite as chilly as the last couple of mornings. That doesn't mean you can go without a jacket, though. It's still uh, cool out there, so we're in the 40s right now. Low temperature in the upper 40s, and uh, we've got a fair amount of humidity. Now, these there's still a difference, six degrees between these two numbers, but we don't have really any wind to speak of. Uh, some clouds are trying to slide on in here, so that will help prevent fog, but we're going to have to watch out for a little bit of fog. There is some down around Victoria, not a lot. I don't think it's going to be a, a huge issue, but just to kind of be on the lookout for it and we'll probably have to be doing the same thing tomorrow. Uh, look out for a little bit of fog. Mold, Mountain Cedar and Elm are all on the low side throughout the day. Some clouds, a little bit of fog this morning, and then we'll see a lot more sunshine later on today. It's going to be even warmer than yesterday. We hit 71. We're going to be up to 74 today. Plenty of sunshine around here. Wind out of the southeast, 10 to 15 miles per hour. Even warmer tomorrow, despite a front moving through in the morning. That's really going to drop the humidity. Weekend forecast, that's coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King, and really had not been a heck of a lot going on this morning. No, just a big thing here is this uh, construction going on. This is uh, I-10 East at Louisville. 1604 and just a little uh, to the west of 64 1604 in the westbound lanes uh, had a uh, slow down some uh, diversion here at exit uh, 585 that's FM 15 uh, 16 slowing some folks down and here's a look at that on the map this is where this orange is is kind of where people are getting diverted off of I-10 there onto the frontage roads and then they can get uh, back on a little bit later but there is uh, con some construction going on in the area so uh, that is slowing you down a little bit in that area looking at the rest of the region things are looking uh, fine this uh, slow down here uh, that was also construction related on 35 is improving uh, now up to 35 miles per hour to travel time just a few minutes ago it was down to 15 16 minutes uh, there uh, just to the south of 1103 so that's uh, looking good but again that I-10 construction slowing you down a little bit if you're coming in from uh, I-10 East. Uh, so that's travel time from Seguin up to 33 minutes. As you know, usually that's like 28, 29 minutes, maybe a half hour, but slow down definitely inside 1604. So watch out for that this morning. We'll have another update coming up. Thank you, Samuel. Today could be the day the Senate takes up the COVID-19 relief bill, but Democratic leaders are still waiting for the official cost estimate before bringing their newly revised bill to the floor. And as CNN's Brett Conway reports, there's been a few compromises as lawmakers push to get a stimulus package passed before unemployment benefits start to run out. Closing in on the weekend and Senate Democrats are down to the wire. We've come a long way, but we have a long way to go scrambling to put their final touches on the COVID-19 relief bill, including a compromise between the White House and moderate Democrats to narrow eligibility for the next round of stimulus checks to make it mirror House levels, capping out checks for individuals making more than $80,000 and joint filers making twice that. Two rail and bridge projects will be stripped from the bill, and the minimum wage bump has been taken out too. Once the bill does get to the Senate floor, one senator says he'll demand it be read out loud in its entirety, an unusual move that will take about 10 hours. Then there will be up to 20 hours of debate, followed by a voterama, which is essentially an opportunity for Republicans to offer amendments to the bill. I expect a hearty debate and some late nights. He's right. Not a single Republican is expected to vote for the bill, and they're gearing up for a messy fight. 
vast catalog of liberal spending with basically no relationship whatsoever to beating COVID-19. This whole bill, in my opinion, gets an F grade because it fails to do what it's supposed to do. I'm not going to get pumped into voting for a bill that helps Pelosi bail out California. As the president makes a final push. Staying unified. Knowing every Democrat needs to be on board to get this bill over the finish line. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Thousands more Americans now have health care under the Affordable Care Act. Federal data shows that more than 206,000 people signed up on the recently reopened federal exchange. In January, President Biden ordered the exchange opened for a special enrollment period. During the first two weeks, the number of signups nearly tripled. Special enrollment runs until May 15th. Most states have also extended their enrollment seasons. Leaders of several big American companies are calling on lawmakers to pass legislation allowing DREAMers to become legal U.S. citizens. DREAMers were brought into the U.S. illegally as children. The Coalition for American Dream is made up of more than 100 organizations, including Amazon, General Motors, and Target. The reintroduced bipartisan bill would allow DREAMers to apply for permanent resident status and later citizenship. Groups also says not passing the DREAM Act could result in a loss of $350 billion in gross domestic product and $90 billion in lost federal taxes. The SpaceX Mars rocket prototype had a short test flight yesterday afternoon. The SN10 swooped in for landing after soaring over parts of Texas. It rose roughly six miles above the coastal landscape for before, before coming back to Earth successfully. However, a few minutes after touching down, it exploded. No word on that cause yet. SpaceX halted a test flight of the Starship prototype earlier in the day. The call to abort the launch of the projectile came with just one-tenth of a second left. Two of SpaceX's prototypes crash landed after their respective launches. SpaceX says it plans to use Starship for numerous purposes, among them taking customers between cities at extreme speeds and eventually taking cargo and people to Mars. Third time was almost the charm. M maybe almost. next time. Maybe. 536, about 47 degrees. And still ahead, why you may soon see more dollar store franchises like Dollar Tree popping up in your area. And next, why the housing market continues to boom during our pandemic, what that means for buyers and sellers. And taking a look outside with live cam, we look at the map over there. Yep, we are actually at 45 degrees right now. Still a cool start to your day, so grab a jacket, but you'll probably lose it this afternoon. We will check in with Mike later on. We're so embarrassed we overpaid for this used car. We don't even want to show our faces around here. Yep, went to the wrong used car side. Remember, if you don't see me, you're not seeing the most accurate price. Shop at Carfax. You won't have to overpay on the used car again. All right, kids. Coast is clear. Wait for me. Come on, come on. Shop millions of great deals, all with a free Carfax report. Only at the all-new Carfax.com. The sun is incredible. It makes our Lipton tea leaves better, which makes the smooth tea taste better and time together even better. And drinking Lipton can help support a healthy heart. Lipton is a proud sponsor of the American Heart Association's Life is Why campaign. For pain relief, don't just block the pain with ordinary patches and creams. Help heal the pain with Thermacare. Real therapeutic heat increases blood flow to help accelerate healing. So you not only feel better, you get better. Thermacare, real heat, real healing. 540, it's another sign the housing market remains red hot despite the pandemic. A new report shows inventory is so low that homes in January sold in half the time they did a year ago. So what does this mean for buyers and sellers? CNN's Mandy Gaither has more. Welcome. If you're looking to buy a home this year, get ready to act fast in this red hot competitive market. We have twice as much money that we need to put down on the property and we still just can't find someone to accept the offer. A new report from the National Association of Realtors found the number of homes for sale is so low that in January, homes sold in half the time they did a year ago. The data shows properties sold typically stayed on the market for only 21 days. That's down from 43 days a year ago. There have been four, four homes this year that I was able to put under contract before I actually listed the property on the multiple listing service. 
So what's behind this? Real estate investors say three things, high demand, low supply, and near zero mortgage rates, along with the COVID-19 pandemic, increasing the need for home space and delaying major expenses like weddings. Everything was put on hold. So you have um, a group of people with good savings that um, are getting into the market. The number of available properties for sale is at a record low. Just two months into 2021, the supply of unsold single-family homes matched December as the lowest level since the National Association of Realtors began tracking in 1982. If you're in the market for a home, experts recommend you stay flexible and explore properties below your maximum loan amount that may need some rehabbing. So you have that buffer zone, right? And also, don't be afraid of, of a little bit of grease, a little bit of TLC. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither. It is 542, but it's actually 45 degrees. The Alamo City just became Bird City. Up next, we're going to tell you how San Antonio just became a certified member of Bird City, Texas, and what that means for you. And welcome back. It's 545. In your morning consumer headlines, Dollar Tree stores are opening up everywhere. Company officials say they plan on opening 400 new Dollar Tree stores and 200 family dollar stores throughout 2021. The two chains currently own nearly 16,000 locations in the U.S. And let's say the pandemic has hit many retailers hard, causing thousands to shut down for good. However, many less expensive alternatives, especially dollar stores, are thriving as consumers look for less pricey purchases. Dollar Tree says sales at its established stores rose nearly 5% during the 13-week span that ended in January. That's compared to the same time frame the year before. All items at Dollar Tree are price marked at a dollar, while family dollar items are usually under 10 bucks. Well, get ready, Facebook users. You'll soon see those political ads again as you screen through your feeds. The social media giant says it plans to end its moratorium on those ads today. The ban on U.S. political advertising began in November around the time of the 2020 election. Facebook also signaled they may implement further changes to its policies regarding those ads. The ad restriction rollback comes amid law enforcement concerns about right-wing extremists possibly planning more violence around the U.S. Capitol building today. Platforms including Facebook are being scrutinized for social media's role in fanning the flames ahead of the siege on the Capitol on January 6th. Dozens of Disney stores will be closing down soon. The parent company of ABC News now says it will close at least 60 stores nationwide. The company says it now plans to shift more focus to e-commerce. Well, San Antonio is known for many things like great food and historic locations like the Alamo. But thanks to an ongoing effort to sustain natural habitats for wildlife, the Alamo City just became a part of Bird City. A partnership program between Audubon, Texas and Texas Parks and Wildlife has just certified San Antonio as a Bird City, Texas community. Bird City, Texas is a program that was created to help people protect birds and their habitats. The criteria required to attain certification includes things like helping to enhance and restore bird habitats, increase native plant coverage and reduce population level threats. Research shows that bird friendly habitat increases property values, helps control insects and generate rates tourism dollars. According to the Audubon Texas Director of Conservation Strategy, San Antonio is one of the latest Texas communities that has embodied a strong conservation ethic. The certification lasts through 2023 and some of the most popular areas to check out birds include many of San Antonio's parks including Friedrich Wilderness Park, Canyon State Natural Area, Stone Oak Park and the San Antonio Botanical Garden just to name a few. And you can also check out more locations and information located on the Bird City, Texas website. Well, for the latest on traffic at 548, Samuel King is standing by. A lot of uh, birds around the area, so that's one of the things you go to the parks, you see the birds. So I probably should learn more species and stuff because... I, I look at it. I don't. All of us, we don't. We, we, don't, we know. don't know. People send us pictures all the time, right. Samuel, and we're always guessing. Really? Like, Other than the obvious ones like cardinals and right. robins. And geese. He's doing a Bob White, yeah. which is a kind of quail. That's the only one he knows. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's not even. <laughs> <laughs> this is I-10-A, 1604. You can see traffic still uh, being diverted there at exit 585. Some construction and a lot of what's going on is you're making up kind of for lost time from the uh, storms that had postponed a lot of uh, construction. I think this is uh, some of the barrier work they were doing. Uh, 
they're supposed to be doing last week, but uh, some work out there in this uh, ongoing I-10 project that's expo expected to last another couple years at least. Uh, looking here, you see that slowdown down to 16 miles per hour there. You saw there the Transguide camera, people uh, slowing down. Looking at other parts of, actually, uh, sorry, we have to travel time here now. So now you're up to nine minutes between uh, 1604 and 410 heading westbound on I-10, according to our system. Six minutes going the other way. So that gives you an idea of the slowdown, and I'll probably continue to build. The rest of the area looks fine. Let's go up to Bandera Road on the northwest side here. Uh, 11 minutes between 410 and 1604. So that is looking fine right now. But of course, we'll keep an eye on it. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Samuel. And what did you say when you saw this picture? Oh, yeah, I was like, I don't remember seeing tulips <laughs> on the river walk. And I was guessing they had to have been planted within the last couple of days, right? I, I have no idea. Maybe they just sprouted, too. I don't know. Because I think tulip bulbs, they stayed dormant for a while. Not, I mean, I'm the last person to know about things that grow as far as plants. So birds and flowers are really need to brush up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, beautiful picture, though, you know, right there where that little, uh, this little bit of the river diverts off going in toward uh, the, uh, the mall. Isn't that, that, that's that's yeah. Casa Rio over and that's there, Casa yes. Rio there uh -huh. in, right. the, in the background. But great picture. Thank you very much for that one, Rob. Yeah, take a little uh, stroll along the river walk and see some of the, uh, the plants that are in bloom or going to be. Got a few clouds hanging around here right now, which is going to help as far as the, the fog situation is concerned, because we, you know, you kind of keep that blanket on top. That doesn't really allow the, the heat to continue to escape out into space. If we had completely clear skies, uh, then we would see a lot more in the way of some fog this morning. Still got to be on the lookout for it. What a difference out there in the hill country. Temperatures are about 20 degrees warmer than what it was. As a matter of fact, warmer in the hill country than it is here. 45 in town and 43 at, uh, at Randolph and the dew point temperatures. It is a lot higher than what it was yesterday. As a matter of fact, they've gone up about 20 degrees in parts of the hill country. So when you're running, you know, neck and neck with the air temperatures and the dew point temperatures, that's where you start to see a little bit of fog or can with light wind and then clear skies. So we're going to have to watch out for that, like I said, over the next couple of hours. And a few clouds hanging around here this morning. Then we'll see a lot more sunshine. And then we go into tomorrow morning and the clouds come back in here. We'll still have plenty of humidity. There may be a sprinkle or two as the this front moves on through. It's really doubtful, but a mention of one or two of them. Then we're going to be clearing out. Now the problem tomorrow is we we won't get the cooler air coming in here immediately. The dry air moves in. That's going to allow things to heat up, but also it's going to be windy. And given the fact we haven't had rain and seems like forever, uh, it's really going to increase the fire danger, especially out in portions of the hill country. And that's going to be throughout the uh, afternoon hours tomorrow. Clouds will move back in here, and then the relatively cooler air is going to be sliding on in here for the weekend. And so that'll knock temperatures down. We'll be on the above normal side by anywhere from five to 10 degrees tomorrow afternoon and then below normal by about five, six, seven, eight degrees over the weekend. So roughly a 10, 15 degree difference between tomorrow and the weekend. We'll have uh, still a few more clouds hanging around here and plenty of clouds. It looks like weekend into the first part of next week, but Rain chances maybe by the middle of next week, uh, one or two of them out there, but it's not looking, not really looking encouraging as of right now. 67 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies, and then high temperature up to 74. So we add about three, four degrees on top of yesterday's high, and then do that again tomorrow, getting in the mid upper 70s and even some low 80s. We will have fog in the morning again, or at least the chance of it tomorrow. And then the front moves through breezy and uh, much drier air comes on in here. Not a bad weekend. Fair amount of clouds hanging around here, but great temperatures, lower humidity, and then heat and humidity comes back in middle of next week. Did we just miss the best catch of all time? Mm -hmm. uh, just try to <laughs> drop your <laughs> iPad. iPad mid air. <laughs> try not to be obvious, <laughs> but I got it. That's we're, okay. We're okay. <laughs> 553 right now, 47 degrees. Let's take a look at all your lottery numbers, starting out with pick three. So we have one, two, zero, fireball nine, and we have daily four, five, six, 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 fireball four. Yeah, that one's a little disturbing. Yes. Cash five numbers, six, 14, 20, 22, 34. Lotto, Texas, six, 26, 30, 32, 35, 47. And Powerball, 21, 40, 44, 50, 55. Powerball, 16, power play, three.
Good morning. Coming up here, President Biden blasting some states for racing to reopen and dropping mask mandates as his administration tries to safely reopen schools. The new Secretary of Education is going to join us live for his first national interview since being sworn in. And you'll see that only here on GMA. Well, golf seems to be growing more popular amid the pandemic here in San Antonio. The president and CEO of Alamo City Golf Trail says they've seen more golfers this past year than at any other time. They've seen about a 30% increase in rounds and revenues. There's also a wide range of new golfers the facility is seeing. We have this whole story online right now at ksat.com. Ranching in Texas goes back way further than you might think. Just ahead on Good Morning San Antonio today, a look at the initial roles Tejanos played in developing the ranching industry here in the Lone Star State. More folks are up and at them right now. We've got some flashing lights out there at 10 and 410. We'll get updated with Samuel King and Mike is also going to touch on that possibility for some fog in the outlying areas. More to come right here on GMSA. Glad you're with us. Pour a fresh cup of coffee. We'll be right back. The head of ERCOT is out. The CEO of the nonprofit that runs the Texas Power Grid facing the fallout from last month's winter storms. And taking a look outside with a live cam this morning. Let me look at the temperatures over here. Hey, we're right. We're at 47 degrees right now, but we have a warm day ahead. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Morning, everybody. Rise and shine. It is Thursday, March 4th. Thank you for joining us this morning. And definitely, even though it's going to heat up later, grab a jacket for right now. Still on the cool side out there, mid 40s. And Mike is also telling some of the folks watching right now, you might see a little bit of fog. Yeah, there's a hint of it around Victoria right now. That's the only uh, reporting spot that's showing any fog as of right now. But we've still got a couple of hours to go. We do have a few clouds, as you can kind of see in this picture and that acts like a little bit of a blanket and can help prevent a lot of the the thick fog the widespread fog from forming up also i mean this is compared to yesterday just a, a complete flip-flop temperatures were flirting right around freezing in parts of the hill country yesterday now they're almost 20 degrees warmer 51 kerrville fredericksburg rock springs 50 we're at 47 here in town a normal low temperature 48 exactly is the normal low temperature and uh fog again the only spot well now a hint of it's being reported there in rock springs and a little bit more around victoria nothing too thick as of yet but yeah, we've got to watch out for the next couple of hours. Mold, Mountain Cedar, Mountain Cedar still hanging in there, and uh, Elm are all on the light side. The updated pollen count is going to be coming out in about an um, hour, hour and a half or so. Uh, this morning, we may drop down another degree or two with some of these clouds around here, and then and the clouds may stick around through uh, mid-morning. Then we'll be up into the uh, mid-upper 60s already by noon. Nice big warm-up throughout the morning, and we top off right around mid-70s later on today. So about, so say, three, four degrees above where it was yesterday on the above normal side and then we'll continue to add to that tomorrow. Tomorrow's kind of transition day with the front moving on through here. What's that mean for the weekend? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King and other than a big old construction front end loader thing out there. Yeah, not bad. The thing's looking uh, pretty good. This is a uh, loop 10 at 410. On? Is it on? I, I it hope doesn't so. sound like it. Yeah, it is on. Huh. It is on. Hello, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Uh, talk, talk loudly into my hello. microphone. Yes, one, two, three. Hi, Mike. Okay. All right. uh, well, this is a 410. We'll make this quick. Uh, you can see the slowdown here we've been talking about between 1604 and 410. Uh, taking a look here at the east side now, up to 13 minutes now between 1604 and uh, 410. Uh, sounds like we're okay there, so uh, that's good. And then uh, looking at the travel time coming in from Seguin, now we're up to 37 minutes uh, coming into uh, downtown San Antonio. 28 minutes on 281 from Belverde, 24 minutes on I-10. And we'll have another update coming up. Mark? Thank you, Samuel. I heard you. And the CEO of ERCOT, the nonprofit that operates the state's power grid, will be fired. The ERCOT board of directors confirming ERCOT president and CEO Bill Magnus will be given 60 days before he's fired. It follows the blast of freezing temperatures that communities across the state endured without power. 
The two-month period will allow Magnus to work with state leaders on potential reforms to ERCOT. The search for a new president and CEO is expected to begin. This is a second senior official to leave their post. Public Utilities Commission Chair Deanne Walker resigned on Monday. Governor Greg Abbott says masks are now optional, but the Texas Education Agency says, hold on, they're going to stay on. TEA officials say the governor's order does not take away their authority to implement requirements for public schools. The agency issued new guidance that state schools should continue enforcing mask guidelines for any student over the age of 10. However, local school boards have the authority to modify or get rid of the policy. So far in San Antonio, most districts are continuing the mass policy. See where districts stand on the matter? Go to KSAT.com. Governor Greg Abbott spoke to KSAT 12 in an exclusive interview yesterday. In that interview, he defended his decision. They know the safe actions to take. Wash your hands, wear a mask, stay a safe distance from others. They don't need a state mandate to tell them what to do. They know what to do. Nevertheless, I did remind them yesterday, and I will again today, and that is we're open 100%, but you should still follow the safe practices to make sure that you don't get and you do not spread COVID-19. The governor also told us more than half of Texans who are vulnerable and 65 or older have been vaccinated. However, the Texas Tribune reports about 7% of all Texans have been fully vaccinated. Experts say that's still nowhere close to reaching herd immunity. You can watch our entire interview with the governor on our website on KSAT.com. Texans who nearly died from COVID are urging the community to continue to follow safety protocols even without the state mandate. They say the lifting of restrictions gives, gives them anxiety about their lives and those of their loved ones. Some people tell KSAT they're shocked the governor would give this order. They say it puts lives at risk by opening Texas when less than 7% of the population has been vaccinated. They hope the Texans will use common sense. With that type of percentage, it's just, it's just way too low for us just to you know, turn away from everything. Um, you know, 100% opening, um, no masks. It's just, it, it doesn't make sense to me. The virus is going to go up and there's going to be more people in the hospital, more uh, deaths. Believe me, uh, and it's going to be scary. Scientists at Texas Biomed say there's a lot of proven evidence that shows social distancing and masks help reduce the spread. The San Antonio International Airport is reminding travelers the facility will keep the mask mandate in place. The announcement was shared on the airport's Facebook page explaining the mask mandate falls under federal requirement at airports and on airplanes. VIA also taking to Facebook to remind passengers they will be required to also wear face coverings on their vehicles and at their facilities. VIA is also citing federal requirements for the mandate. The only passengers who are exempt are under the age of two. Local health officials report 190 new cases of COVID-19 here in Bear County. They report six more people died from the virus as well. Mayor Ron Nuremberg says the seven-day moving average now at 347 cases per day. He says 410 people remain in the hospital with COVID-19. Teachers and school Excuse me, teachers, at school and child care staff are now eligible to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. The Texas Department of State Health Services made that announcement yesterday. However, local leaders say there are still challenges, including matching the supply with the demand for vaccines. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf says vaccine appointments at the Wonderland of the Americas Mall have been booked weeks in advance. He says universities may begin to focus their vaccine efforts on teachers on March 22nd, but that plan is still being worked out. If you're wondering when kids will be able to receive the vaccine, health experts say it could be soon. Both Pfizer and Moderna are enrolling in studies involving children 12 and older. Pfizer's vaccine cleared for anyone 16 and older and Moderna's for anyone 18 and older. Experts say children are more difficult because the dose may need to be different for various age groups. You can read more about this on KSAT.com. And prices are going up at grocery stores this morning, and things could get worse. The government has a new prediction on where prices are headed. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details. This morning, experts warning of rising food prices with no end in sight to the spike. One major factor, the cost of gas on the rise after the deep freeze in Texas last month, which shut down the country's largest refineries, raising the cost of shipping goods. It cost me more at the fuel pump so it costs more to ship the load out, meaning it's going to end up going in the store at a higher price. 
AAA says the national average for a gallon of gas is now 274. That's 31 cents higher than a month ago. But the pandemic still gets much of the blame for higher prices at grocery stores thanks to supply chain issues, shopper capacity limits in stores, and more people eating at home. The coronavirus has caused a major disruption within the food supply chain. We have this unprecedented demand uh, at the grocery stores. The government is now estimating a 6 to 9 percent increase this year in soybean prices, commonly found in many plant-based meat substitutes, and a 5 to 8 percent increase in wheat prices. Fast food customers also paying more. Prices are up more than 6 percent in the last year, compared to about 3 percent at traditional restaurants. And as food prices rise, so does the need for help. Thank you so much. Food banks are now seeing an unprecedented number of families coming through their doors. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Here in San Antonio, average price for a gallon of regular unleaded, $2.38, according to GasBuddy.com. That's up about seven cents from a week ago and 32 cents from a month ago. But despite the increase, GasBuddy ranks San Antonio as one of the most affordable places to buy fuel in the entire nation. Well, there's that. Time now is 6.09 and 47 degrees for now. Well, the first time in about a year, fans will be at Spurs game tonight. Find out who the team will honor at the AT&T Center. And the cowboy is a timeless Texas symbol, but after the break, we're going to explore the true roots of the Texas cowboy. It's part of our Tejano Moments series. Outside with live cam. Sun is trying to come up. We've got uh, city lights reflecting off some clouds out by the airport. You're watching GMSA. Welcome back 613 on your Thursday morning. Glad you're with us. Ranching has been a big part of our state's history, but some may not know it first began back in the late 1600s by the Spaniards and Mexicans who developed the area. Eric Hernandez provides some historic details in the latest Tejano Moments story. While New Spain was developing the area we now know as Texas, explorers start developing the land around missions into ranchos or ranches. When those first expeditions come, uh, along with the men, uh, the cavalry mounted men, come supplies, uh, horses, uh, and cattle uh, to the extent that those cattle are going to be the first uh, time that livestock and horses come into Texas. These ranches begin to emerge in the southern and eastern parts of the state. And we're talking about um, by 1721, uh, there's already the first mission ranches, especially around San Antonio with the missions we have here. And within those ranches, you could find what is now an icon of Texas, the Longhorn, which were being brought in from Spain. They come to Texas and they multiply incredibly. There's, uh, it's purported that close to a million head of livestock are here by the mid 1700s. Besides Longhorns, two other major contributions of those first ranches by Tejanos was the development of the science of ranching and the role of the vaquero or cowboys. The vaqueros produce ultimately what we know as the cowboy and ranching creates that environment, the society and the culture that we all honor today. All of this important as it shows the first initial roles the Hanos played in developing the ranching industry in Texas. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. And to learn more about Tejano history, you can see past Tejano Moments stories on our website, KSAT.com, or on our streaming app. 6.15, perfect time to check in with our traffic authority, Mr. Samuel King. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Still have these uh, construction-related delays here. Uh, doing some, uh, looks like they're doing some milling work and some barrier work here on I-10 between 1604 and 410. So you see a uh, traffic uh, being uh, diverted there down to, to one lane heading uh, westbound. So let's take a look at that here again on uh, the map here. So you can see this is 1604, uh, 410s on the uh, other side of the screen here. You can see uh, that slowdown as that traffic uh, is uh, down to uh, one lane. So let's take a look at the travel time. Just a few minutes ago, it was 13 minutes. Now we're down to uh, 10 minutes. So that is an improving there. Only five minutes going the other way. So that gives you an idea of the delay. On the uh, west side, I had some issues here uh, yesterday morning, but right now uh, things look good. 10 minutes between 1604 and 98 minutes going the other way guys not too bad mike yes. mike 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 hi hi 
What about that school bus? I feel like I'm in trouble. <laughs> no, you're bus not. Bus is coming, so. <laughs> Where's the bus? Where's the? There oh, it there is. It's always, it's always on time. There's the right. bus. It stops. <laughs> and it's 45 degrees right now, or we will be down to about 45 degrees in the next uh, hour or so. Uh, with some clouds and maybe a patch of fog and not much wind out there. Then later on today, it's going to be very warm. Yesterday, we hit 71 normal high temperature. We're going to be above normal later on this afternoon. Wind out of the southeast at about uh, 10 to 15 miles per hour. Haven't had one of these in a while. Take a look, Mark. Nice. Great view. Yeah, I, I, there was a, a small plane doing all sorts of stuff near my house yesterday. I, I got a, the Flight Aware app open, and I saw not only were the C5s out doing touch and goes, but there was a ton of activity over at Randolph, too. I mean, trainers flying everywhere yesterday. Severe clear yesterday. Oh, yeah, perfect flying called, day. So Gear down, wings all dirtied up. Great looking shot there. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. And again, if you need somebody to ride in the jump seat, just give me a call. So out there, 433, me first. Anyway, uh, we've got clouds hanging around here. You can see the early glow of the uh, the sunrise and plenty of clouds. So it's not going to be quite as picture perfect as yesterday. 47 degrees here in town, 42 Randolph, 50s in the hill country. About 20 degrees warmer than what it was at this time yesterday. And again, we've got uh, some more humidity. It's not as though you walk outside and it's it you feel the humidity necessarily, but these numbers have definitely gone up compared to yesterday. Now, as far as uh, clouds and any sort of precipitation, basically precipitation, kind of forget about that for the next seven days. There could be a couple of sprinkles early tomorrow morning as this uh, front moves on through here. We're going to start continue to see the humidity kind of come on in here, so we'll probably see some more fog or at least the chance of it tomorrow morning. Then that front's going to move through about Mm, mid late morning and the wind's going to be shifting around out of the north. Drier air is going to come in here first. The cooler temperatures though are going to be holding off for a while. So with the drier air that's going to heat up very, very quickly and that'll put us into the uh, upper 70s tomorrow, probably even some low 80s around here and with the windy conditions and that very dry air that's going to really uh, put the fire danger on the high side out there in parts of the hill country. Then the cooler air comes on in here for the weekend. It's not going to be bone chilling cold will just be well about 10 15 degrees cooler than what it will be tomorrow but that puts us in the mid 60s for the weekend still a lot of clouds hanging around here over the weekend and going into the uh, the first part of next week and as far as any rain maybe by the middle of next week but that's kind of pushing things i mean computer models just really are not bullish on any rain around here. The other thing to, to take note of is uh, compared to yesterday, there aren't as many freezing temperatures even on the national map. Now, obviously, it's still really, really cold up there. International Falls and Caribou, but we had a lot more of these uh, freezing temperatures, so it's just sort of mm, kind of easing back up into Canada, if you will, all that really cold air. So forecast today, we are going to be up to 67 degrees, partly cloudy skies, and then high temperature today up to 74, about three, four degrees above normal. Tomorrow, make it up into the upper 70s and some low 80s around the area. And it's going to be windy. We will have much drier air, so watch out the, for the higher fire danger tomorrow afternoon. Breezy on Saturday, mid 60s over the weekend. Somebody asked me yesterday when I was getting my car washed, the line was short enough and I finally got it done. <laughs> Good. Uh, we done with the freeze. The average last freeze is late February. However, the latest we've ever hit freezing is April 3rd. So you said uh, no. So odds are no, but. No. But you never know. Said there's still, <laughs> and given the fact what happened last month, I ain't betting on anything. That, <laughs> so, that's true. That's true. 620, about 47, 47 degrees. 47 yes. degrees. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And the host of The Bachelor addressing the controversy over his comments regarding a contestant's race. Find out more in today's GMA First Look. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Loves me? Loves me not. New Neutrogena Skin Balancing. Three made-for-you formulas with 2% PHA. Exfoliate and condition for soft, balanced skin. Find the one. Neutrogena. Millions are saying yes to Allegra, the number one allergist-recommended non-drowsy brand. Allegra works two times faster than Claritin. And unlike Zyrtec, it's non-drowsy. Say yes to Allegra. 
And for congestion relief, find Allegra D behind the pharmacy counter. I'm made to move, but these days, I'm not getting out as much as I'd like to. That's why I take OsteoBiflex. It helps with occasional joint stiffness while it nourishes and strengthens my joints for the long term. OsteoBiflex, because I'm made to move. Fight fleas and ticks with Seresto. Eight months continuous protection against fleas and ticks. It's effective, convenient. Seresto. Keep playing. More on Seresto.com. In, in, in this morning's GMA show. First Look, an so ABC News exclusive. Morning, why would you defend Rachel Kirkinell? For the first time since stepping aside from the Bachelor franchise, host Chris Harrison is speaking out to Good Morning America's Michael Strahan. It's been just over three weeks since Harrison made these comments to former Bachelorette Rachel Lindsay, defending current contestant Rachel Kirkinell and that picture of her at an Old South-themed party in 2018. It's not a good look. No, it's not a good, well, Rachel, is it a good look in 2018 or is it not a good look in 2021? You said, quote, is it not a good look in 2018 or is it not a good look in 2021 because they're the big difference? To you, what is the difference? This morning, Chris Harrison is opening up about his regrets, what he's learned, and the future of the Bachelor franchise. It's all coming up at 7 a.m. with your GMA First Look. I'm Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Google says it will stop tracking what you do online. The company says it will not create new trackers once third-party cookies are phased out from its Chrome browser. Those cookies are what leads to personalized ads. However, the decision does not mean targeted advertising will come to an end. Instead of cookies, Google says it will use software that prevents individual tracking but still delivers results to advertisers and publishers. Google did not say when the change would occur. Gamers may soon be enjoying a new version of the Nintendo Switch. The latest model is expected to be equipped with a bigger screen, a 7-inch Samsung OLED display. Mass production of the console reportedly starts in June with the hopes of meeting upcoming holiday demand. In sports, NFL fans may be facing big changes when it comes to watching games. The league is reportedly close to reaching a deal that would make Amazon Prime Video the exclusive home of Thursday night football after the 2022 season. Now, the Wall Street Journal reports all the new broadcasting deals could be done by next week. It's game day. Our Spurs back in action tonight. They play their last game before the NBA All-Star break. They host the Oklahoma City Thunder tonight at 8. You can watch it on Fox Sports Southwest or get highlights right here tomorrow morning on GMSA. And speaking of tonight's Spurs game, it will be the first one to have fans in the stands. The Spurs will honor a group of hometown heroes at the AT&T Center tonight. More than 1,000 first responders, medical workers, and teachers will be honored at the game. The organization says they are excited to honor people who have put their lives on the line to keep us all safe during the pandemic. Amen. 626, about 47 degrees. Security increasing its presence outside the U.S. Capitol today. Amid new threats, we will find out what is being done to mitigate any risk of danger. And checking the roads with Transguide. We've got heavy traffic and flashing lights. Looks like traffic has actually slowed down big time there. Uh, at, at 10, I actually moved past it, so I don't know where it was. We'll be right back. Thank you. A new threat against the Capitol yields heightened security concerns. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, the baseless claims that has some lawmakers on edge. Outside with live cam, the sun is coming up. We have a few more clouds around than we did yesterday. Mike is standing by with an update on your Thursday forecast. Hi, good morning. It is Thursday, March 4th, and this afternoon it will feel more like March. Yeah, on the cool side now, but another warm up. So uh, we're stringing together some great weather for pretty much the entire work week, aren't we, Mike? Yeah, yesterday we were down in the upper 30s, so 10 degrees below normal. Now we're at a normal low temperature and then going to be on the above normal side uh, later on today. And as you mentioned, a couple of clouds out there looks sort of like a watercolor painting. It's beautiful. And uh, we're sitting at 47 degrees. Dew point is at 41, which means 
Uh, it, you don't really feel the humidity when you step outside, but relative to that number, it is getting higher. And we've been on the lookout for a little bit of fog because we haven't had much of any um, any wind this morning either. And the fog has definitely uh, thickened up a little bit more there. Visibility has dropped in Rock Springs to four miles, seven Fredericksburg, four Victoria, and a little bit more around Beeville. So in these spots, we're just going to have to kind of be on the lookout for the next couple of hours as far as any of this fog. Mold, Mountain Cedar, and Elm are all on the low side. And other than a couple of clouds, patchy fog, we are going to be seeing a lot more sunshine than later on today and warmer than yesterday up to 74 degrees. And then tomorrow, more fog in the morning. Then the front moves on through here. Despite that, though, we are going to be even warmer getting in the upper 70s and even some low 80s around here. Breezy conditions, much drier comes in here, so that's going to heat up very easily. Then the relatively cooler air is going to come in here for the weekend. We'll have a few more in the way of clouds hanging around here, so not the prettiest of weekends, but it's going to feel fantastic with temperatures in the mid 60s. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King, and what's going on there? Looks like we have a crash here, uh, Mike. Uh, this is at the on-ramp of uh, Loop 410 at uh, State Highway 151. One, you can see uh, the emergency vehicles on the side there. It looks like a little bit of the traffic is getting through, but this is definitely a slow uh, down, definitely uh, on the on ramp here. Uh, you can see traffic uh, flowing uh, well there on the main lanes, but again, this uh, sort of crawling there uh, after that crash there on the on ramp. And here's a look at that uh, on the map. It was uh, going here this way. Uh, 410 to uh, 151, so something to look out for in that area. Also have a crash in the medical center area this morning. Uh, Babcock at uh, Wurzbach. Uh, you can see there's some delays on Wurzbach Road uh, this morning too, so watch out for that. On the other side uh, of that crash here on Fredericksburg Road, looking at the travel times, no uh, real delays there. 15, 16 minutes uh, there uh, on Fredericksburg Road around the uh, medical center area and looking at the area in total I uh, still have those delays uh, east uh Westbound, excuse me, from Seguin on I-10 into downtown San Antonio, uh, 35 minutes now, 26 minutes on 35 coming in from New Braunfels, so that is the normal time. I we'll have another update coming up. Thank you, Samuel. Officials say domestic terrorists could be planning another attack on the U.S. Capitol today. A heightened level of security will be in the area as a result. Cause House leaders to actually cancel today's legislative session. ABC's Ike Ajachi has the latest. This morning, the nation's capital remains on high alert. The FBI and Capitol Police warning of new threats against the government. Investigators uncovering a possible plot by militias to again target the Capitol today. ABC News obtaining an internal bulletin from Capitol Police stating an unidentified group of militia violent extremists had discussed plans to take control of the U.S. Capitol and remove Democratic lawmakers. People are deeply concerned about what uh, potential threats could be out there. The threat is linked to a far-right conspiracy theory pushed by QAnon, falsely claiming Trump will return to Washington today. The claims are false. The security measures are real. Barbed wire and fencing surrounding the Capitol. National Guard members with heavy military vehicles on duty. Roads closed. We have enhanced our security posture. We've taken immediate steps to let uh, the National Guard as well as our workforce know what to expect. It's a stark difference from what was seen on January 6th. Lawmakers this week holding hearings. You have uh, insurrectionists going through the police lines. You are on the phone and they're not immediately approving your request. Drilling down on why it took the Pentagon over three hours to approve the D.C. National Guard to move in and back up Capitol Police on the day of the attack. The Army senior leaders did not think that it looked good. It would be a good optic. Members of Congress pointing to the summer when the killing of unarmed black men led to protests. The National Guard stood ready. Was the issue of optics ever brought up by Army leadership when the D.C. National Guard was deployed during the summer of 2020? It was never discussed. The Senate will stay in session to continue work on President Biden's COVID relief bill despite the security concerns. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. In your morning headlines, two bills are on their way to the U.S. Senate. The House passed one that focuses on ethics and elections. Democrats describe it as anti-corruption legislation that would expand voting access and improve accountability and transparency in Washington. Republicans, however, argue the legislation represents a federal power grab. 
that Democrats are advancing in an effort to gain an advantage in elections. The second bill addresses police misconduct. It's named in honor of George Floyd. He's the black man who died in Minneapolis police custody after a white officer kneeled on his neck for nearly nine minutes. Democratic officials in the House passed the bill in 2020, but it didn't get through the Republican-led Senate at the time. The Senate now led by Democrats, which could increase its chances of being passed. The George Floyd Justice in Policing Act would create a national registry of police misconduct and bans racial and religious profiling by law enforcement at various levels. Late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg was a towering legal figure on the Supreme Court. Now her image could end up towering over the halls of Congress. A group of congressional Democrats pushing a bill to build a mon monument of her at the Capitol. The bill was introduced by the party's Women's Caucus. 16 Democrats have sponsored a companion bill in the Senate. There's no plan for what the monument would look like or how much it would cost. Ginsburg died last September at the age of 87 after 27 years on the Supreme Court. A SpaceX Mars rocket prototype had a short test flight yesterday afternoon. The rocket swooped in for a landing after soaring over parts of Texas. It was able to land, which is better than previous launches, but then it exploded on the ground right there. SpaceX has not said what the issue was yet. The company plans to use the Starship for numerous purposes, among them taking customers between cities at extreme speeds and eventually taking cargo and humans to Mars. Demonstrators in Myanmar are protesting last month's military coup once again this morning. It comes after 38 people were killed by security forces yesterday. The country's largest city has seen constant protests, ending in police force to end the demonstrations. Currently, there is a special envoy form, the United Nations in Myanmar, working to reverse the coup. Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, underwent a successful heart procedure at a London hospital yesterday. According to Buckingham Palace, the procedure was for a pre-existing heart condition. The palace said the 99-year-old royal will remain in the hospital for treatment, rest and recuperation for a number of days. An Australian zoo has announced a plan to save one of the world's most unusual and endangered animals from extinction. The platypus, described as having the body of an otter and a face of a duck, is native to eastern Australia. The immediate, immediate aim is to protect them from wildfires and climate change. The platypus is one of the few mammals to lay eggs and one of the only mammals that are venomous. A report in Australia says they could be extinct within 50 years. Back here at home, you could help design a monopoly board featuring San Antonio landmarks. From now through March 17th, you can share locations you think should be on the game board. Creators say anything and everything from the Alamo City is up for consideration to be included in the game. To find out how to share your ideas, head over to ksat.com and look for this story. And time now is 639 and we're starting around 47 degrees. More restaurants may be opening around town, but before you go, why not find out which one's got perfect scores on their most recent health inspections? It's part of our series, Best of Behind the Kitchen Door, and it's still to come. Welcome back. Just about 643. It's time for best of behind the kitchen door. Perfect restaurant scores from around the Alamo City. And these are actually from inspections from before the big winter storm shut everything down. Let's see who's on our little sampling list this week. Beto's Comida Latina at 8142 Broadway got a perfect score. So did, so did Taco Bell at 11215 FM 471 West. Congratulations to Taco Bell, 20,720 Highway 281 North. Also on our list is the Arby's at 2639 Northeast Loop 410. And finally, a very popular place out near the Rim Shopping Center, Top Golf. Got a perfect score in the food services, 5539 North Loop 1604 West. If your place got a perfect score, send me an email at bkd at ksat.com. We'll try to get it on the air right here on GMSA. Congratulations to all the perfect score recipients. Steph? Yes, congrats and thanks, Mark. Six finalists here in San Antonio were competing yesterday in the Boys and Girls Clubs of America's national competition. The fourth annual Youth of the Year on Gala event was virtual and hosted by our own Ursula Perry. Organizers of the event say the award recognizes teens who have made significant contributions to their family, school, and to their community. Lauren Alamendrez was this year's Youth of the Year winner. She's a sophomore at Kipp University Prep. Lauren and her family were home for several years. She says the Boys and Girls Club helped them build a home. 
keep pushing and try your best and at the end of the day, good things will come. The program also helped her with shyness and self-confidence. Lauren received a scholarship and has advanced to the state competition with a chance to go to the regional and national competitions. She says she wants to be a police officer after going to college. Let's check on traffic at 644. Here's Samuel King. Uh, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Have a situation. This is at uh, the State Highway 151 and Loop 410 interchange. You see uh, more emergency crews on the scene there. There's a, a crash and it's causing uh, some delays on that uh, on ramp there. So that's going to uh, slow you down if you're uh, commute in that area. Uh, and here's a look at it on the map. You can see this is the, the eastbound lanes here uh, heading toward uh, Highway 90 and 151. That traffic down to nine miles per hour. So watch out uh, for that there. Also still have this crash in the medical center area, Babcock Road at Wurzbach Road, causing some delays uh, very close to the medical center. So busy time over there as well. We also still have uh, these delays here on uh, I-10 on the east side between 1604 and 410 heading uh, into town. Eight minutes now on uh, heading westbound on I-10. That's a little better than it was just a second ago. It was actually up to 13 minutes. That's why I threw it back in <laughs> uh, to our rotation here. But it seems like it's sort of ebbing and flowing as uh, traffic flows, guys. All right. Well, watch out for those problem areas. Thank you, Samuel. A picture that is pure Texas. Yeah, that's just fantastic looking. There's that bull just posing for the camera and the nice sunset up there in Wilson County. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. All right, sunrise is not as pretty, obviously, as what it was yesterday. And that cloud cover has actually kind of helped as far as uh, preventing fog development because it acted like a blanket on top of us. We had some clear skies earlier. And there are places, though, with a little bit of fog. Now, uh, down around Victoria, Rock Springs has a hint of it as well. One of the reasons why we are seeing fog in some places, notice how the dew point temperature compared to this time yesterday is up 20 degrees compared to yesterday, 19 Kerrville. And so all that extra humidity, we've had some clear skies out there and that has helped to contribute to uh, some of the fog. So humidity is going to remain up there, not oppressively humid, but just enough. And that's going to be the case tonight and then into tomorrow morning. And with that extra humidity, we'll probably be seeing some fog try and form up around the area again tomorrow, maybe even a little bit of mist if there is some of that uh, thicker fog. But notice the, the brown, the dry air out there to the west. That comes on in here. This front's going to move through about mid morning tomorrow and the wind's going to be shifting around out of the northwest. It's not one of those where it's an immediate um, surge of cooler air coming on in here. So we're with the dry air in place. We are actually going to be warming up, but with those windy conditions and this very, very dry air out to the west, the fire danger is going to be much higher out there in uh, parts of the hill country tomorrow. Then as we go into Saturday, the cooler air is going to start to kind of edge its way on in here. So temperatures, it's not going to be a big blast of cold air, but compared to upper 70s or even low 80s, 10 above normal will be about five below normal. So about a 15 degree difference between tomorrow and Saturday as far as high temperatures as well as Sunday. We uh, have a couple of clouds hanging around here this morning. Those will continue to clear on out. So beautiful sunshine today. Again, mid 70s, very spring like today. Clouds starting off tomorrow, more sunshine in the afternoon. Then we'll keep a fair amount of clouds around Saturday, Sunday, even into the first part of next week. So here's the next low, which is moving in our direction, but not close enough to really do any good as far as any rain chances. I mean, there may be a sprinkle as that front moves on through tomorrow morning, but that's pretty much going to be about it. It will help to warm things up out ahead of it, and then it pulls that front down in behind it, and that's what uh, also gives us the windier conditions. Going into the weekend, a little bit below normal, but another big trough is developing out there to the west. That's going to put us in this southwesterly airflow, and so what that means is it's going to start to warm right back up going into next week. So we're looking at uh, more mid 70s by the middle part of next week. And we get into a very spring like pattern here with a low off to the west and a high off to the east. And that just means some warm temperatures through most all of next week. OK, forecast today, mid 60s at noon. We've got clouds around this morning and a couple of patches of fog here and there. Not anything too awfully thick, though. High temperature up to 74, mostly sunny skies. And then overnight, more humidity is going to help with more clouds tomorrow morning. Maybe some fog again. The front moves through mid morning. Very windy tomorrow. Dry air. Got to watch out for that fire danger off to the, uh, the west, especially. Then the cooler air comes on in here for the weekend, so mid 60s, and we'll make it back to the mid 70s by the middle of next week. 60s and 70s, not too bad. Mm -mm, it's going to be a pleasant weekend temperature wise.
Thank you, Mike. 649, 48 degrees. And the pandemic has taken its toll across the country, especially when it comes to education and enrollment in colleges. Tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to see how enrollment at community colleges has had the biggest impact. Outside with live cam on your early Thursday morning, we always thank you for starting your day with us here on GMSA. Another look at traffic coming up. Closing in on the weekend and Senate Democrats are down to the wire. We've come a long way, but we have a long way to go. Scrambling to put their final touches on the COVID-19 relief bill, including a compromise between the White House and moderate Democrats to narrow eligibility for the next round of stimulus checks to make it mirror House levels, capping out checks for individuals making more than $80,000 and joint filers making twice that. Two rail and bridge projects will be stripped from the bill, and the minimum wage bump has been taken out too. Once the bill does get to the Senate floor, one senator says he'll demand it be read out loud in its entirety, an unusual move that will take about 10 hours. Then there will be up to 20 hours of debate, followed by a voterama, which is essentially an opportunity for Republicans to offer amendments to the bill. I expect a hearty debate and some late nights. He's right. Not a single Republican is expected to vote for the bill, and they're gearing up for a messy fight vast catalog of liberal spending with basically no relationship whatsoever to beating COVID-19. This whole bill, in my opinion, gets an F grade because it fails to do what it's supposed to do. I'm not going to get pumped into voting for a bill that helps Pelosi bail out California. As the president makes a final push. Staying unified. Knowing every Democrat needs to be on board to get this bill over the finish line. I'm Britt Conway reporting. And coming up today on GMSA at 9, helping women in need and ending the stigma surrounding periods. In honor of Women's History Month, local business is hosting a drive for feminine products and offering generous discounts for customers who make a donation. How you can help today at 9 after Good Morning America. And for now, let's go ahead and check back with Samuel because there are a lot of problems there at 151 and Loop 410. Yeah, we have to crash. You see emergency crews on the scene here at the 410 and uh, 151 interchange, and that's causing uh, some delays for folks uh, this morning. You can see especially uh, those eastbound lanes, you see that delay there down to 11 miles per hour. Still have a crash on the board in the medical center area at Babcock Road and Wurzbach Road to watch out for. And looking at the region, the I-10 situation improving uh, westbound from Seguin. There's a lot of that construction uh, has wrapped up for the morning, so that's a, a a good deal there. 17 minutes coming in on 35 from Lytle, 19 minutes coming in from Castroville on 90, Mike. Looks like the uh, the shades are up just enough to let the sun peek over, peek through the window just a little bit there and some uh, clouds. We do have a little bit of fog, but not enough to really get things all discombobulated around here. A little bit more around Beeville. Just be on the lookout where there is some though this morning. Otherwise, uh, 10 miles visibility uh, 49 right now. So we've actually gone up a degree or two 50s in parts of the hill country. A lot of sunshine this afternoon, 74 degrees, very spring like tomorrow. We start off maybe some more fog around here and then up to 77 after front moves on through. It's going to be windy and much drier. Watch out for the fire danger tomorrow afternoon. We'll keep you updated on that. And then the weekend looks uh, pretty nice. Wow, this week is flying by, isn't it, it guys? It has. Mm -hmm. and I'm liking the sunshine, too. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you back here for GMSA at 9. GMA is next.